Australian radio has a rich history of covering horse racing. Its callers have always been considered among the best in the world, and many became household names. From Eric Welch and Joe Brown in Melbourne, to the colourful Ken Howard in Sydney, and the accurate one Bill Collins. But for more than 30 years, another voice has become just as familiar to punters around the nation. Good morning and welcome to our huge coverage of racing around the nation this Wednesday, September the 17th, 1997. Sand down today, the track is slow, the weather is fine, and the rail is John Vertigan is the on-air racing coordinator for Melbourne's Sport 927, the station which is owned by the racing industry and has provided an exclusive coverage for that city of all TAB meetings around Australia for more than a decade. On this fairly typical Wednesday, John will be on air for roughly five hours, ensuring the broadcast of almost 70 races with associated information. We have eight meetings to cover. We've got uh, a Greyhound meeting, we've got uh, trots at Mooney Valley, we've got the races at Sandown, at Newcastle, at Gawler, at Ipswich, Belmont and Mudgee. So we're in for a quiet time today. <laughs> Something he would not have dreamed of as a 16-year-old starting out at 3GL Geelong and a far cry from his early days in this role in 1965 on Saturday afternoons at the same station, then known as 3UZ. It was a luxury in those days to do the program because you had four race meetings on a Saturday and on occasions five, and that was considered to be extremely busy. Mark, you, um, we didn't do uh, tote calls uh, and the totes were usually delayed by some hours, even if uh, not the next day, although it was next day payout at the TAB. In those days, the station would also carry football. But now, with the enormous proliferation of meetings covered by Victoria's privatised totalisator company, Tabcorp, there's little time for anything but wall-to-wall -wall racing, thoroughbred, harness and greyhounds. And we have a late scratching at Ipswich now. Race four, number five, Mr Boone is out at 102 on Bet's advice. So a late scratching there at Ipswich, race four, number five, Mr Boone out at 102. Winner, concentration is paramount, and races often clash, where technology comes to the rescue. We do everything practically now in the computer itself. If uh, they've jumped at uh, Newcastle, and uh, at the same time, for some reason or other, Gawler decides to clash and not hold, we can feed Gawler straight into the computer, and even start playing it before the race is finished. Out of the course, or rather one of them, Race caller Brian Martin now finds himself immersed in something he grew up with. I was listening to John Vertigan, uh, you know, I was only a teenager and I was listening to John Vertigan and uh, the way he'd coordinate the racing, I think he took over from Bob Cornish and they were just masters at their craft. Martin has been calling races in Melbourne for 27 years after being heard by the legendary Bert Bryant holidaying in Cairns, Queensland. And for some reason the call of the Grand National actually filtered through on the relay up there, they weren't betting on it and he heard my call of the Grand National in 1971 at Victoria Park. He was in touch with Lewis Bennett, the great Lewis Bennett, the manager at 3UZ, and said, uh, I've heard this kid in Adelaide, I'd like him to join our team. And for most of his career, it's been the reassuring voice of John Vertigan down the line. Uh, yes, John? Uh, have you got the prices on the previous there? I mean, just... Yes, the price is John on race number seven. Now the he understands the pressures uh, we're under in here, and I understand that he's uh, got to be able to tell his listeners about the race, we've got to have interviews, and we've got to get all this in and get it flowing and keep it going. But it's not a two-man act. Three, Freddie the Merc out at 12.28. Opening call, race two at Sandown Gallops. One scratching, a field of seven. Number one, the late male Tycoon Princess, 4.30 and 1.90. The teamwork here at the radio station with uh, Neil Lofty Longden um, alongside me doing all the tote calls, and uh, the team outside who are feeding information um, constantly through my headphones, like correct weights, uh, uh, riding changes, late scratchings and all that information has been fed to me. And far from sounding the death knell for radio's monopoly, the introduction of Sky Channel to hotels and Tabcorp agencies in 1987 has actually helped. If uh, some of these callers are saying, well, they're all in and they're telling little porky pies because they want to get on the air earlier, uh, we can look up at the screen and see that there are two or three still to come in, so uh, we leave uh, the cross until that last second, if we need to. The Sky and Tote Monitor is the only new piece of equipment for Martin, but the format is vastly different from 1972. 
It's a lot tighter. There, uh, there's very little air time. That's that's the, that's the most noticeable thing that I've found in 25 years is the fact that it's it's so tight for time. As soon as you've sort of got a race out of the way at Sandown on an afternoon, there's something happening right on top of you again, and that can be frustrating for a racing commentator because um, there might be a story that you want to tell. Martin has to consider interstate relays who take his calls. And at Mooney Valley, he also does the course announcements. For Vertigan, the pressure is always on. Right, you've got to concentrate. Uh, to have everything running s as smoothly as possible, and there will be clashes. And uh, that's the time when you start to curse. Uh, because uh, some race clubs, are, uh, especially in outback areas, of <laughs> far reaches of this country, uh, shrug their shoulders and the starter looks at the watch and says, oh, it's starting time, I'd better put them in the stalls, you know. <laughs> Surprisingly, the anchor man has no racing background. My interest more, was more in broadcasting something that was happening immediately and urgently. I'm not a racing man. I don't follow the races. I uh, have the occasional bet when I'm on course, which is probably once a year. I go down to Warrnambool. Um, but I'm not a betting man. I don't have a TAB account and I, uh, I don't bet. But John Vertigan has made punting a more pleasurable experience for millions of other Australians. Coming up soon, Australia's female race caller. We'll see you then.